So the first thing to do after soldering the board is connect it to power. And in this case, I use the DC barrel to two screw terminal blocks. Be mindful of plus and minus. Uh, as I said, the sales, sc sales screen on this sample is missing, sadly enough. But the lower part is plus and the upper one is minus. Um, but when you order the boards, that should be clearly noted on the board itself. So, uh, the first thing to do, let me get those off real quick, is to connect the board. And basically, nothing should happen. That is correct. Then we take our multimeter. Let me try and get that into screen. There we go. And we measure the plus and minus of the voltage converter. You see what the input is currently. Oh, oh my leads turned around. There we go. We're getting 12.6 volts from the power supply. And then we have to check on the other side of the voltage converter to see what it's converting into. It's sometimes a bit tricky. Okay, it's converting to 11.53. So we need to change that to 3.3 volts. To do that, we turn the screw terminal that's on the voltage converter. You need a really tiny screwdriver for that. It's always a bit fiddly. And the best way to do it is to lay your measurement on the solder points. So we're at 11.53. Let me try and get this on camera. Yeah, that's okay. This screwdriver doesn't really fit. Let me try another one real quick. There we go. And we need to get that somewhere around 3.3, 3.4. The input range is 3.3 to 3.6. So I mostly leave it just a little bit higher. But as you can see, Right now it's 3.45, 3.46. That's within margin enough uh, so that the ESP will have enough power. Do not plug in the ESP before you do this, but we, because as you saw, it will get 12 volts on its input and fry immediately. Okay, after that's done, let's disconnect the board from power. So I disconnected from power. I take an ESP8266 and, oh, I just plug it in. I'm not sure if there's a program on this one, but we'll see. We plug it in and if, it, if everything's correct, the red LED should light up and there's a blue Wi-Fi LED on there, but because we put the jumpers on there, the ESP will boot into flash mode. So basically nothing should happen. And well, that's the case. So next up, I'm going to take my laptop and using these DuPont cables and a USB to serial converter, we're going to connect the ESP8266 to my laptop to flash it. So yeah, let's see how that works. So, to flash the ESP8266, we need one of these uh, flash modules. And let me try to get that folks for you. It's going to be a bit hard. There we go. And as you can see, there is a 3.3 volt and a 5 volt mode. 
we are going to need the 3.3 volt mode. So be sure to put the jumper on 3.3 volt and VCC. After that, plug it into a USB port. There we go. And it should appear in Windows. And you can easily check in the device manager uh, which port the COM port has become. And in my point, in my case, it sees the CH340 on COM3. Okay. After that, you need the ESP flasher and the Node MCU file, which can both be found on my website. And it uh, oh, the Node MCU flasher automatically selects COM3, so that's nice. And uh, let's connect the ESP module. In theory, we need three connections. Oh, let me, let me get this real quick. There we go. We need TX, TX, RX, and ground. So let's take our little module. And those should be right next to each other on the module itself or on the USB to serial converter. There we go. Oh, I'm going to turn around. Sorry if this isn't in focused. I have the screen focused for later on. So once you did that, you need to take the ESP board. Okay, let me focus this anyway. There we go. And you need to find the TX, RX, and ground pins. And in, on this version, the two outer ones are always ground. And the two inner ones are TX and RX. But you need to reverse them from what you see on the USB to serial converter. So TX needs to be connected to RX, and RX needs to be connected to TX. And well, ground always needs to go to ground. So let's separate ground real quick. And let's plug it into ground. There we go. And then we have TX and RX. I'm not sure you can see that, but okay. So let's see. Brown is TX on the voltage or in the USB to serial converter. So that will be RX on the device. So it should be correct like this. But you need to figure that out when you start with doing this. So let's focus the screen again. Now you can try flashing from USB power and see how that goes. Or well, actually, no, we didn't connect USB power, so you can't. <laughs> you can't try doing that. You'll need an extra cable. Um, but in this case, we're just going to use the power supply and reconnect it. There we go. And then we're going to configure the flasher to use our firmware. Uh, this is a firmware I compiled myself, which only has the modules we need. Let me see if I can, there we go. And uh, yeah, let's see if that works. Be sure to have the two jumpers on there. Okay. If the AP Mac and the SDA Mac appears, it has found the ESP module. And as you can see, it's starting the flashing. And if I turn off the lights real quick, you can see that the ESP module is also flashing blue, just like the um, serial module is. So let's keep that flashing for a bit. Takes a little while to upload the whole firmware. Okay, that's done. We can take a look at the log, but it will just say that it found the ESP and flash was successful. Okay, that's great. So disconnect the USB to serial. Disconnect the power again. Um, I'm going to leave the serial cables on there because we're going to use it later on to program the board. And now the ESP is flashed, so we can remove the jumpers. 
but it can be a bit hard with the ESP on there. So let's take it off real quick and pull off the jumpers. So now these leads are, there we go. Now these leads are free and that means that the ESP is out of flash mode. But simply just flash the firmware, we can just connect to it and program it. But that will be in the next video.